Hello, continuing our work with quadratic equations, we're going to look at situations where we have quadratics that are a little bit hidden or look a little bit funny. Now, if I come to this question here, even if I don't recognize that it's a quadratic, I know that I have an equation that has fractions in it. And without any other context, I'm going to try and get rid of those fractions. That is virtually always what we want to do if we have an equation involving fractions, we're going to get rid of the fractions, make all the denominators one. So without any further context, that's just what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is find my lowest common denominator. So what's my lowest common denominator going to be? This can look a little bit funny with algebra, but it, it follows exactly the same reasoning as we already know about from uh, number denominators. So if I can't see a common factor, if when I'd factorized all of my bottom uh, numbers, I can't see a common factor between them, then I just have to multiply all of them together. I don't need to worry about multiplying by one, but uh, I do need to multiply x and x minus one together. So I need to uh, have x multiplied by x minus one underneath all of my fractions. So what do I need to multiply by here? I need to multiply by x. Now, to keep the ratio of this fraction the same, I must multiply the top by x as well. Here, I need to end up with is x by x minus uh, 1, so I need to multiply by x minus 1. And likewise on the top. And here I have to multiply by x by x minus 1, because I just have 1 on the bottom at the moment. So x by x minus 1. So I end up with x all over x on x minus 1 plus 4x minus 4 all over x on x minus 1 is equal to 3x squared minus 3 x all over x on x minus 1. Now I have everything uh, over the same denominator, but I'd like to have a single fraction equals a single fraction. It saves me uh, problems, it uh, avoids issues that can happen if we try to move too fast. So we have this intervening line and then our final line before getting rid of our denominators is going to be writing a single fraction is equal to a single fraction all over the same denominator. This method takes a line longer, but is an awful lot safer in terms of not making sign errors uh, in our questions. So now I have single fraction is equal to single fraction all over the same denominator. So what I'm going to do is now multiply both sides by x on x minus 1, multiply both sides by my lowest common denominator, And I'm going to end up dividing out that top and bottom. Uh, and then I'm left with only the top line. So of, uh, I have 5x minus 4 is equal to 3x squared minus 3x. I now recognize that I've just got a quadratic, and I know that that means that I'm going to rearrange to have everything equals 0. Uh, so I am going to uh, rearrange that now. And the easiest side to rearrange to, because it'll leave me with a positive x squared term, is to move everything into the right-hand side. So I end up with 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. At this point, I have two options. I'm able to... Uh, either use the minus b formula, or I would be able to use factorization uh, to solve my problem. Whichever method I use, so I can use the minus b or factorizing, whatever method I use, I'm going to end up with x is equal to 2 over 3, and x is equal to 2. And again, if you want a refresher on that, we can look to our last video.
So that is uh, how we factorize our, that is how we solve an equation like this. If we see anything involving fractions, universally we're going to get rid of the fractions. So we follow these steps even if we don't recognize any other part of the question. When we get to a quadratic, we know that we want everything on one side, and we will either factorize or use the minus b formula in order to get uh, where our y value, so this is our quadratic, where is our y value equal to zero, and we call these our roots. So these are the roots of our quadratic. Uh, so that is the basics of a question like that. Now, what we're going to touch on as an addendum to this, as a, an extra uh, for this, is if we were asked a question like, where is y equal to uh, 3x squared minus 8 x plus 4 is equal to 4. If I was asked a question like that, what does it mean? Well, there are two different ways of interpreting what it means, but the first one uh, that I'm going to uh, touch on, the one that we will think about most often, uh, is we're looking for where our line, our blue line here, is our uh, quadratic. I've drawn it here. Uh, and we're looking for where y is 4. So we draw in, I'll draw this in as a dashed line, where is y equal to 4. That dashed line is the line y equals 4. Of course, your graphs can be much more accurate because uh, you'll have squared paper. I'm doing this on a blackboard type situation. Now, where is y equal to 4? Well, there's one that's very easy to read off. y is 4. Uh, when x is 0, when I'm crossing the y-axis. How would I know that automatically? Because I know that my y-intercept is going to be the constant on the end of my quadratic, because on the y-axis, all of my x stuff is 0. So when x is 0, y is 4, is a line I already know, or a point I already know. So that's one of them simply read off of the graph. The other one is where our two lines intersect each other, so we're looking at that point there, uh, and I'd be looking for or where y is 4, I go across, and then I would go downward to find my x value. And again, you can do this more accurately if with your ruled paper. And that is very approximately uh, going to be uh, what x is equal to 2 and two thirds or maybe if uh, two and three quarters so i would be able to say graphically then from my picture from my picture i would be able to say that if the solutions to that would be x is equal to zero that one i'm very confident of and x would be equal to something around uh 2.66 or two and two thirds that's from my picture. Now, the other way that we can do this is algebraically, which is simply to say that we have a new quadratic. So we have to be able to do that graphically. It's on our course. We must be able to do it. We must also be able to handle the situation algebraically. So what we're going to do is I recognize I've got a quadratic. This is just a new quadratic, but I have a quadratic. I'm going to get everything over on one side. So 3x squared minus 8x is equal to 0. Now this I could solve with the minus b formula, but factorizing in this case is vastly quicker. Uh, and I end up taking out my common factor, which is always the type of factor I look for first. Uh, and I can see that at x could be equal to 0. Well, that one checks out. I already know that one graphically. And let's see how we got on with our uh, second estimate of our root. 3x minus 8 is equal to 0. Uh, rearranging that, I would get at x is equal to 8 all over 3, rearranging in a normal way. Uh, and that works out to 2 and 2 thirds. Uh, yeah. So we didn't do too badly there. Uh, but you would be given, if you are asked to estimate the roots from the graph, you would be given a, uh, a fairly broad 
uh, range of possible answers that you would get full marks for. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, that's our interpreting and sketching graphs, uh, a reminder on roots, a reminder we always get rid of our fractions, and now situations like this, where we have something that is quadratic but looks a little bit funny. And in these situations, substitution is usually the best uh, thing to do. So if I'm given something that I can see as a quadratic, by which I mean I have something squared and then the thing and then a constant. So I'd have, I'll call this a. So if I have a is equal to x minus 1, I'd have 3a squared minus 11a plus 6 is equal to 0. If I see something like this, it doesn't matter how odd the thing is in brackets. I know that I have something in the general shape of a quadratic. So again, I can do a substitution. In this case, I said a was equal to the stuff in brackets. Uh, and I'm just going to solve this like a normal quadratic using the minus b formula or factorizing. And when I do that, I will get uh, a is equal to 2 over 3, or a is equal to 3. And then I've just solved this perfectly normally, and then I resubstitute back in x minus 1 is equal to 2 over 3, or x minus 1 is equal to 3. And rearranging, x is equal to 5 over 3, or x is equal to 4. So if I get something that looks funny like this, but I can recognize that I have something squared and then the thing and then a constant, I just do a substitution to rewrite it as a friendly looking quadratic and solve that quadratic using the minus b formula or my factorizing method. Uh, and then at the end, when I've gotten the solution to my substituted thing, to my a, I just go back in and sub in x minus 1 uh, into my uh, equation and solve for my values of x. The only thing to highlight on a question like this is there's a particular version of it that is uh, quite hidden, which is if you got something like 3 uh, x to the power of 4 minus 11 x squared plus 6 was equal to 0. What you would have to recognize there is that if you could say that at uh, y was equal to x squared, because x to the power of 4 is equal to x squared squared. So this would be 3y squared minus 11y plus 6 is equal to 0. We would solve for y as normal and then sub in y is equal to x squared once we'd found our solutions. So those are the different flavors of quadratic equation that we can be given for now. Uh, and we uh, can see how this links into our sketches of our graphs, how we can read information from our graphs, uh, either to check our answer's reasonableness or uh, sometimes in the exam to actually just give the final answer. Uh, and we can see how we could uh, solve our quadratics for different values of y. So if we weren't given our quadratic equals zero, we know that we would be able to find. Uh, we know that we would be able to uh, find our values of x for y equals any particular number. Uh, so that is what we need for our quadratic equations.